Here we go. I'm recording this video after back-to-back -back doubles and no sleep. I don't mean like the baby was crying so your mama didn't get no sleep sleep. <laughs> I mean like no sleep, like I almost crashed my whip after dozing off behind the wheel sleep. <laughs> Does anyone say whip anymore? Is a truck even a whip? Have you ever looked into the consequences of prolonged periods of sleep deprivation? <laughs> it's bad. But I'm not here to talk about sleep. Actually, I can't re remember what I was... Oh yeah, this piece that I read, an article I came across entitled, Why Would Somebody Choose to Be a Correctional Officer? And maybe it's the long hours or the lack of oxygen flow to my frontal lobe, but the overall tone of this little write-up was a little off-putting to me. And I'll explain. The author is a former police officer and a writer, a highly educated and accomplished individual. So of course with that type of resume, I was anxious to see what he wrote. Now this piece was written a while ago, like in 2015, but it's worth a look. In it, in the article, the author talks about COs. That's us, correctional officers. It touches on the way that our profession is viewed by you know who, the public. He writes, COs don't enjoy the social status that police and firefighters have. Both the police and fire services are viewed as exciting, hero jobs by many if not most people. He says it's not uncommon at all for a child to express a desire to become a police officer or firefighter when they grow up. If they said they wanted to be a prison guard, their parents would rush them to therapy. <laughs> if uh, one of my children called me a guard, I'd rush my hand right upside their head. Ow, right in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, relax, activists. I'm just kidding. I'd never hit my kids. <laughs> Not for something that trivial. But look, he's right. The thought of one of my kids working inside of a correctional facility seems silly to me. Actually, it seems terrifying. What do you think? Would you want your offspring to carry the keys? To work as an officer inside? Let me know in the comments below. Yes or hell to the no. For me, the answer is difficult, complicated. See, on one hand, I'm extremely proud of what I do. It's my calling. It's where I'm supposed to be right now. It's my tiny way to serve my community. But on the other hand, this one right here, I would worry because of what the environment has done to me. And I'm not sure that I'd want one of my children subjected to the same shit. Does that make sense? It should. If it does, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button. Aw, thank you. You're too kind. So right here is where me and the author see eye to eye. But that's where my subscription to his depiction stopped. Came to a screeching halt. See this next part? The following paragraph was problematic for me. He writes, Corrections is a professional field. He says, There are many professional grade people working in the job. Doing the best they can and trying every day to get better. And I'm all good with that. I work with some solid people. But this next line is, well, it's crap. He says that corrections is often the second choice for unsuccessful police applicants and people with unmarketable job skills. Let me say that again because maybe you drifted off or you didn't quite hear what I said. Corrections, my career, our career, a career I've given my heart and soul to, a career where you could literally be fucking murdered at work, is full of unsuccessful police applicants and people with unmarketable job skills. WTF! This guy is saying that many of us are professional grade people. I'm not even sure what that means. But that the rest of us are rejects. Misfits. So get this. This is what trips my trigger. The assumption by the author, which is in line with the public, is that the majority of us are only correctional officers because we couldn't get onto a police department. That we couldn't pass the test. That we're just a bunch of overweight degenerates. Longing. Just dreaming to be a real cop. <laughs> Maybe some of us are. But most of us aren't. Heck, a choice for unsuccessful police applicants or people without marketable job skills? What does that sound like to you? If I said that you had no marketable job skills? It sounds bad, don't it? To me, it does. Now, if I'm being silly or you feel like I'm taking this out of context, let me know in the comments. So what's a marketable job skill? Well, Google said communication, critical thinking, problem solving, teamwork, time management, public speaking, active listening, adaptability. <laughs> this sounds familiar. Almost like a posting for a correctional officer. What's funny is that some kids gotta go to college to learn these skills, pay to pick up these traits. But for uneducated individuals like myself, it comes natural. Those marketable skills that I mentioned are on display inside of correctional facilities every single day. Do you really mean that the majority of people who work corrections don't have degrees? Because the BOP wants a bachelor's and some of the folks I work with have masters. But honestly, in this arena, that piece of paper doesn't much matter. 
The article goes on to say that the job usually doesn't involve a lot of difficult labor. I'm curious if the author considers carrying an individual up a flight of stairs difficult or laborious, or if lifting an individual onto a gurney is difficult or laborious. Is breaking up two or three grown-ass men who are banging it out in the middle of a day room difficult? Laborious? I would venture to say that the degree of difficulty and the percentage of downtime to activity is similar to our counterparts on the street. Look, both professions are extremely dangerous. Both professions are incredibly challenging. And both professions have amazingly selfless, brave men and women who are willing to sacrifice their time and their lives in service of their community. I wouldn't write an article that said cops are just cops because they couldn't become firefighters. Or that firefighters are people that just couldn't become doctors. Because that would be dumb. Presumptuous on my part. An unfair characterization of a group based on a few. The author does state that he admires correctional officers for doing what he says is a job that is difficult at best. <laughs> the wording there is a little wonky. But he admits that he would never want to work inside. He said he would be pretty nervous if he spent his days locked up inside of a facility with a bunch of felons who probably hated him. With only a radio and maybe a baton to defend himself. Radio, yes. Baton, <laughs> nope. Well, maybe I do. I don't know. What do you guys have? Put in the comments below. But honestly, no matter what you carry, baton or not, Taser or not, MK9 or not, the odds are bad. <laughs> Pretty nervous. Don't worry about it, brother. We're all nervous. The article does end with the author wishing that we, that correctional officers, could be more valued by society. <laughs> me too, brother. Me too. The problem is, we can't change the opinion of the public if we don't change our opinions about ourselves. So for me, the problem isn't that this article sheds kind of a weird light on the profession. And after all, the guy's a cop, not a correctional officer. So he doesn't really know. The problem is that we haven't done anything to change the narrative. To enlighten those that are in the dark about what we do. But <laughs> I need help from you. Because before I can get an outsider to see the value in what we do, I have to convince you. <laughs> and that's proven to be rather difficult and laborious. <laughs> did you see what I did there? If you like this video, if you found value in this video, straight punch that little like icon. Comment and share this video with anyone and everyone you think may be interested. Subscribe and click that little bell so you're notified every time I release another video. And if you're looking for more correctional content, head on over to my Facebook page. I'll post a link in the description below so you know where to go. And don't forget to check out my books, The Nothing That Never Happened and When Home Becomes a Housing Unit, both available on Amazon. All right, guys, that's all I got until next time. Be smart, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk soon.